Now let's compare a consumption tax versus an income tax. For this, we're going to do it in a plane where I have two goods, good X on the horizontal axis and good Y on the vertical axis. I'm going to assume that you have $500 in income and that the price of both X and Y are $1. So if you draw the initial budget line for this, it's going to be a straight budget line like this, uh, where you are, uh, can actually uh, spend uh, $500 worth or can buy 500 goods of each X and Y if you spend the money just on those two. I, I also told you that just to make it simple, let's assume initially you are consuming about half of, the, of each good. So you're going to be around here, and this is 250, and then the vertical axis is also 250. Okay, so from this point on, now what happens if the government uh, charge you a, a price, a consumption tax of $1 on every unit of um, good X that you buy? How would this look like? Well, essentially, good X is cost $2 now for the consumer. So the budget line would, um, would pivot, and it would look like it will be anchored at 250 along the um, horizontal axis. And uh, the consumer is probably going to be worse off. Now, we also assume that, that the government is going to collect $100 on, on tax. So that means that the consumer, we're kind of assuming the person is actually ends up buying 100 units of good X. Because if it buys 100 units, then you are paying uh, $100 of tax to the government. And then finally, uh, we are going to try to, so we're not going to draw the indifference curve yet. I'm going to do that at the end, OK, to, to compare um, how the consumer is, is better off or worse off with the different taxes. Now, that's, that's the other option is to charge an income tax that collects the same amount of revenue, $100. So how do you do that? Again, the first thing is to know what happens to the budget line, whether the, it, the slope changes or whether it's just a shift. And I know an income tax that charges just on income is not going to change prices. So that means that the slope of the budget line is going to be the same as it was before. It's going to be that red line shift down by the amount of the tax, which is exactly 400 Now, this is a little easier because um, we, we know that we're going to anchor this at 400 here. It's going to have the same slope of the red line. So it's going to go kind of like that. And he, again, it must pass to that point because it collects the same amount of money, $100, than the consumption tax was collecting. So that's our, our third border line. So we have the red line, which is our first border line, the blue line, which is uh, the border line with, uh, uh, with the tax on consumption, and then the black budget line, which is a tax on income. All of this, these two taxes collect, both of them collect $100 to the government. Now, which one will be better for the consumer? Which is, is one of these taxes that made the consumer better off? So this time, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to draw first an indifference curve uh, for the original situation. And then I'm going to start moving to the left, given the, um, the different income the consumer has. All right? So and you can just draw an indifference curve with any shape. And then you can try to change that later on. So this is our initial indifference curve when there was, um, when there was actually uh, no taxes. Now, uh, this is the indifference curve will be tangent to this blue line when there were, um, let me do it a little more accelerated here. because um, So it has the same shape as the, um, as the I1, but it's just lower because your consumer has less money. So on that one, you end up right here on this point. It's called that point B. But what about the indifference curve when the uh, budget line is this black line? Well, clearly, that I2 is not the maximizing because it's not tangent. So you have to shift that indifference curve out to where it's just tangent to that black line. It will probably be around there. That's I3. Now, notice that at that point, you end up consuming a little bit more X and a little less um, um, Y, but you end up being happier because you're at I3. So between the two, t the two, the two tax, B or C, B is the uh, consumption tax, and C is the income tax, you are clearly better off at C because you, uh, you actually are able to reach a higher indifference curve. And if you watch the video on the wage tax versus the head tax is the same idea. 
a tax that taxes a particular thing, in this case a good x, is always going to be worse off than a tax that is general and it doesn't depend on prices. Graphically, we can say the same thing by saying that a tax that causes the budget line to pivot, to change the slope of the budget line, always makes the consumer worse off than a tax that shifts the budget line without changing the slope. And the reason is the same. Every time you, you pivot the budget line, you are uh, biasing the consumer against or in favor of just one thing, and therefore you're taking away the consumer's uh, ability to adjust to the tax. Now, as I said in class, there's one thing that we're forgetting here uh, about the income tax. And the income tax uh, analysis is incomplete because the truth is that you can make income that comes from other sources other than working. So therefore, uh, the income tax should be evaluated uh, in addition to this model, in another model that has the other things that can actually make you income, which is uh, savings, uh, the interest you collect. So we, in order to complete the analysis, we will have to do it uh, in that model too.